Today, I am very happy to welcome Enrique Lizpaso, the co-owner and CEO of Multiverse Computing and the winner of the Digital Europe Unicorn Award 2024. Welcome to Digital Europe's Tech Talk. Thank you very much, Cecilia, for inviting me to be here. I mean, uh, yes, I am the proud winner of the Digital the Future Unicorn. Well, well deserved. I mean, so Multiverse is a global leader in quantum-based computing solutions. So, I mean, if we look at your solutions for everyone who's not like a tech specialist, can you tell a little bit about what does it do? I mean, who are your clients? What do you do for your for your clients and what are the benefits that it brings? I think that uh, the best way to solve, to answer that is just to focus on some solutions on that we are just providing us now. The first one is uh, LLMs, Large Language Models. Everybody knows what ChatGPT is and how useful it is, but not so many people know that, for example, this is consuming a large amount of electricity. So we are just building large machines that are very electricity hungry ones. Our solutions does half the cost. One that is also important, but is something that we are already doing with hospitals. Intensive care units. Intensive care units, everybody knows, I mean, is when you are really, really, really in a bad condition and you are just put in there. You know, uh, some of these uh, intensive care units, they have zillions of data. Analyzing that is tremendously difficult, but the doctors there want an answer, a fast answer. They want just who of all the patients inside an intensive care unit is going to have a problem in the next 20 minutes because they have to be prepared. Unless we have this huge amount of computing power, you cannot uh, answer that. And this is what we are answering. So now, uh, looking at what's going on you know, in, in politics and, and, uh, and with the policymakers, we have had the EU defining quantum as a critical technology. We have had NATO uh, way back in, in 22, defining also uh, quantum as a uh, critical technology. Why is quantum so important and at the heart of security strategy these days? The threat of quantum is much more, is deeper, is more important. It's going to turn our world inside out. Our threatening point is that quantum is able, will be able, with the future quantum computers to encrypt, decrypt any kind of uh, conversation. Everything that we have just exchanged through, let's say, WhatsApp or, or mail or whatever, that are also going to be decrypted. Everything is going to be clear at that point. So this is a huge security issue. I mean, predictive maintenance, I mean, combat cloud, all of these kind of things are going to use quantum computer because it's faster, it's more precise. You're really touching about something important here. So what you're saying is the collaboration between the private sector that actually holds all the talent, all the skills, all the innovations, and the public sector, you know, to make sure that we basically uh, collaborate much, much better and much more strategically on these critical technologies, right? In these so deep tech technologies, I mean, the future is even more important than the current. I mean, the technology in the future is going to be even more important. And you have to develop the solutions also for the future. So you need to collaborate with the public institutions, not only to fund the companies, but also to insert those technologies in the things that really matter, for example, defense and cybersecurity and so on. Because this is important to do today. And this is something that Europe has to... I, I, I humbly say, to learn to do that in the way that some other countries have done. Invest at the beginning, because later it will be too late. Let's jump to the company level. So um, if we look at the top 100 tech companies in the world, there are very, very few Europeans. I mean, four or five of them are European. Uh, what's your market strategy? How are you going to grow? Are you going to grow in Europe? Will your company be like European in 20 years? Are you going to the US? What's your market strategy as it is right now? So the point is, do we have just to go emigrate to some other continent or country? Oh, this is not in our roadmap. We want to be remain to uh, remain, to be the, the largest European and the most important uh, quantum computing software company in Europe. We have also to compete in, in the United States and we plan to do that. But this is an European company and this is important also for Europe because this is the way just to retain the highly talented individuals that Europe is producing in tech and, uh, in, uh, and science. To retain them, you need companies like 
obviously multiverse, but some others just to offer them positions. It's not only academic, it's also about the industry. And this is the big difference uh, between, let's say, Europe and the United States, and multiverse is making its point here. So great to see that. So you know that we've been discussing like investment, collaboration, strategic collaboration. Now, looking at uh, Europe, we have uh, we've been known to like we roll out all the red tape, all the regulations. You know, U.S. rolls out all the investments. Uh, is that true? And, and if you look at like um, at, at Brussels, do you follow tech policies in Brussels and all the regulations that are coming? And can you mention maybe an example of a regulation that has had impact on you guys? Look. Uh, just to simplify the things, Europe has a lot of talent, okay? Europe has small companies that are growing the tech, super good. But at some point, those companies are not able to grow as fast as, for example, to say something, the American ones. And this is a financial problem. So we have just to be able, if we want those companies to remain European, just to found in a way, to fund them in a way that the Europe interests remains at the top, at the top of the board of directors, at the top of the policies, everything. And that means putting money there. So what I hear you say is also, I mean, there needs to be a market for it, right? The healthcare se sector needs to adopt it. The uh, electricity and power grid uh, and the vendors and uh, distributors of energy need to apply it. Uh, the ones who are making the data centers need to apply it. So there is a market, but also we need to do strategic investment now with the European Investment Bank. And I would say uh, we both have the, also the, the, the European um, Innovation Council and uh, and of course with the NATO uh, NATO Innovation Fund also. So these type of investment do strategic investments upfront. So if you were in an elevator going from the first floor to the eighth floor, uh, and you had one minute, two minutes to uh, give a few advices on how to keep a company like yours in Europe and make sure that we have you know uh, much more tech investment and companies in Europe. What would those uh, recommendations be? <laughs> the recommendation will be super simple. Support your local champions. Support the companies that are already the, the largest one or one of the two largest in Europe just doing that. Invest directly in them. Invest now. Support your local champions. Eric, it's been an amazing uh, you know, interview with you. Uh, I'm looking very much forward to follow you guys and see how you grow. And I'm sure that you will be like in top 10 of the world's biggest tech companies in 10 years. At least I cross my fingers. And I wish you all the luck uh, out there. Thank you so much for your time. Cecilia, thank you very much. It has been an absolute pleasure to be here. Thanks so much.